as I like to call him Tommy. Tommy was a, uh, a lover of hymns. And uh, we've decided this morning to open up with a few old hymns this morning. I encourage you to sing along with me. Um, that way I'm not all by myself. So, so um, we're going to start off with Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. And on Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand His oath, His covenant, His blood Support me in the overwhelming flood When all around my soul gives away he then is all my hope and stay. And on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, 
faultless to stand before the throne. Sing it out. And on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. That was one third of the upper third. Doesn't mean a thing to you. But when Tommy and Rodney and uh, Scott were little boys, they played guitars. Young men, they began to grow into that. And they had some name for their little group, but Dad was going to announce them in church. And he says, now the upper third has a song. I don't even know what the other name was, but the upper third. And we got thinking about the upper third, and we thought, you know, now that Tommy... Came back to his roots, come back to his faith, um, solid in the Lord here. He's now with the upper third. <laughs> I don't think that was an accident that Dad said that. <coughs> We're so glad you've joined us today. This has been a difficult week. The last couple of weeks have been heavy. But God. But God. Um Mom would always say this, and I'm going to refer today to several family members who would say things. Mom would say this, what would we do without the Lord? And those of us who have been Christians for a while realize that is a true statement. Where would we be and what would we do without the Lord? A couple things that I want to share with you to start with. I want to lay out the plan for this service today. Um, this is yes a hard time it's a heavy time for our family we've shed our tears we're still shedding some tears we will shed some tears grief doesn't go away easily but we know the one that we can go to and the one we can talk to the one will carry us through our difficult times we're here today three things have brought us together three things the first thing is we've come together and we've come to remember tom there was a lot of that went on last night at the funeral home. A lot of memories. There was a lot of sharing. A lot of concern. A lot of folk, their interest, especially believers in Christ, come through, wanted to know where Tommy stood with the Lord. They were kind of hesitant to say that, but you knew what was in the back of their mind. And it was with great confidence that we could share that the roots that were planted the seed that was planted in Tom many years ago sprouted into his faith today becoming reality. And as he stands today in the presence of the Lord, there's no more limping, there's no more crippled feet, there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more weariness that was just so heavy. He's free. He's free because he trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. So we've come to remember Tom. There'll be some things we'll talk about. And we've got a funeral dinner planned uh, for those that can come back from the cemetery. We'll have time to share some memories and share that time together and remember Tom. So the first thing was to remember. The second thing is we're here today to say our goodbye on this side. This is a final day that Tom will be with us here. He'll be um, laid to rest. His body will be laid to rest. So we come to say goodbye. The third reason that we've come together today, and I think this is most important as a pastor, is that we've come to look at our own self. We're looking at examination of ourself. Because, you know, the Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, that it is appointed or it's destined 
for man wants to die and after that to face judgment. I heard Adrian Rogers say this just a while back. He said, in our culture today, we're almost funny as humans. We dig in so much to where we came from when we spend so little time looking at where we're going. We spend a lot of time looking at our history, our roots. But where will we go when we die? Every one of us are facing death barring the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so where are we? It's time to examine our lives today. As we go into this service with that premise, would you bow with me as we go before the Lord? Heavenly Father, we come to you and thank you so much, God, for your grace and your mercy. We're so thankful, Father, for this family that has come together and our extended family, church family, have come together. Oh, Lord, and we do remember Tom, we we know today this is just a temporary separation for us because of his faith in you. God, we also ask that you would help us as we spend time in your presence during these few moments to examine our own heart and life. Because life is short. Life is uncertain. And God, we just pray that you would be faithful to us again as you always are and deal with each one of our hearts. It doesn't matter where we are, how much uh, faith and religion we have behind us. The important thing is today, where do we stand with you? So, Father, thank you for Tom's life. Thank you, even though it was hard for him. Many times it was hard and difficult, but, Lord, your word says that you're the God who will never leave us and never fail us and forsake us. So, God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Today, would you just touch us all, Lord, by your Holy Spirit and encourage us and help us through this season of grief. Lord, help those that are here today and those that are watching on the live stream right now. We pray, Lord, that you would just be, be faithful to us in this way. Lord, we know that where your word goes out, you're faithful to bring fruit and results from your word. So, Lord, we want to give you thanks today for Tom's life, for this family, for the friends that have come in and those who are joining us now on the live stream. We give you thanks and praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Talking to Chelsea, and we were planning this service today, and I know our family pretty well. And I said, do we want to allow our family an opportunity to share some memories? And she says, Yes, but I doubt that anybody can <laughs> to stand up and share a memory. But we verified it this morning with Chelsea. And for, um, from our immediate family, if anyone would like to share a memory about Tom, this would be the time and the opportunity to do that. Two words, I understand. I understand. It was a, a week ago, yesterday, I had just officiated a funeral service for a, a Christian a family in our church. Their mother had passed, and I just officiated the funeral service. And in that funeral service, I had said, I have a nephew that's in the hospital right now, and and I said, just yesterday, which would have been Monday, I said, I'm not, I wasn't sure where we were going to be because he had made a statement to his dad on the telephone as Tom had called and talked to him. He said, Dad, I don't, I don't think I'm going to make it. And I had that knowledge going into that funeral service, and I officiated on Tuesday. Didn't know we would officiate the service, go to the cemetery, come back here and bring the family for a dinner. And we just, pay, just prayed for the meal, and the people began to, to get their food. And I'd had my phone on silent, so I had missed the call. My brother Tom was trying to call me. So he called Patty's phone. 
I knew immediately what happened. And Patty just lost it. When she got off the phone, she said, Tommy died. And we just broke. We broke. You see, I stand here as a pastor today, but this is my nephew. And I've officiated hundreds of services of funerals. I helped out with dad's funeral. I officiated my mom's funeral. And there's something different when your younger family passes. There's something about that that gets you. Every parent, and there's many of them in here today that have lost children. You know what that feels like. The feeling of, we're not supposed to do this this way. We're supposed to go first, not bury our children. And that struck me. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about the sting of death. There's a sting associated with it. I had just shared that with that family in that funeral service, that when you receive the call that grandma died, when mom died, when, when, when aunt died, th- there was a sting. There's something that happens. There's that, that cutting, the reality that sets in, that life is pretty uncertain. Tom had had his ups and downs for years. He's been on dialysis for, what, better than four years. He would have crisis and go to the hospital and come right back. Sometimes I think he came back before they wanted him to. (laughs) Chelsea could identify with that because Tom did not like the hospital. I don't know anybody here that does. But he wanted to be home. He had done that numerous times. But this time was different. This time was different. I was off on vacation that week, week before last, and on Thursday of that week, I felt that I I need to get a hold of Tom because there had been an ambulance at their house on Monday evening, an ambulance at their house on Wednesday evening. I took him to the hospital then. Got him stabilized and back home. And on Friday evening, when Patty and I had gone away and we come back over the little hill out there on Meridian and seen all the red lights, I said, that's Tom. And we went right down and God, um, God intervened right there to give this family a few more days. And time for a lot of questions to be answered. And Tom was pretty cognizant, clear up to the time he coded. God was merciful. God was gracious. But on that Thursday of my vacation, I I called Tom, and I knew he'd been in the hospital the night before. I called him, and I said, are you up for a visit? Yes. He said, come down. The door's open. So I went down. And I sat in there and we read scripture. We shared scripture. We, we talked about the coming of the Lord. He, he said, I'm ready for Jesus to come. This world's a mess, he said. I'm ready for Jesus to come. He was very confident of his faith, confident of his trust in the Lord. And we talked about that. So I was talking to my nephew, but I was also talking as a pastor. But some of the scriptures that we shared was Psalm 46. The first one I read was says, God is our refuge and our strength. An ever-present help in time of trouble. Because of that, therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, 
Selah. Think about that. Then it goes on to say, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. That's Almighty God. The Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge Selah think about that and we talked about that scripture I said Tom you talking about how the world's all chaotic it's out of control I said this scripture says that nothing is beyond God's control he's almighty God and when he raises his voice and when he steps in things change Our God is the almighty God, and he was in agreement with that. And then he was talking about the rapture of the church. He said, I've been been reading this, and I knew he had been. He knew the scripture. He had it. He 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 was telling me things that was just filling my heart and soul. God had been revealing himself to Tom. That passage of scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And we discuss this passage of Scripture. I should think about it, Tom. You're so weary and you're so tired, and and before this day even ends, Jesus could come. He said, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. The hope that he had. And then, actually, the first passage of Scripture I shared with him, I'm going to read last because God has a blessing for all of us right here today. The main Scripture, and if you're a minister, and if you've been at funerals, you've heard this before. It's the, the foundation verse and passage of Scripture that says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The mid part of that psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or even though I walk through the darkest valley, you are with me. Tom has walked through some dark valleys. Not only with his health, but there were times as Tom was moving through his life that he kind of moved away from some of the roots that he had growing up. But God is faithful to bring him back and a solid foundation that was there. 
So he'd gone through a, a dark valley. And Tom had recorded a song with some friends. <laughs> and the, night, the name of the song is Thank You for the Valley. And I know how this affected me when I heard it. But as you listen to this song, the second stanza, the second verse of this song is Tommy singing on the recording. So if you would listen, please, to thank you for the valley. notice he was in competition with his daddy right there he won, he, won. <laughs> he went above his dad on that last note and we always thought Tom was a high singer and uh, but the message of that song is so powerful it's simple simple song but thank you for the valley how many times do we complain and gripe and and try to push our way through a valley, and we don't want to go through the valley. And I thought it was so timely that Tom sang that particular verse years ago. But how valuable that is to us today to hear. I want to bring to you, in closing, a, a, a brief message because we've, we've remembered Tom here and there's a lot we could say. We're going to say goodbye here in just a few minutes. But now it's time to really look at ourselves and, and realize, as we've mentioned, how Tom wandered a little bit, but he came back to his roots. It reminded me of the, what we call a prodigal son. <laughs> But it really is the, the good father that's really the main character of this story. Jesus told this parable. Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them came to his father and said, Father, give me the portion of the goods that fall to me or give me my inheritance. I'm going to get out of here. So the father divided them 
between the sons, his livelihood. Not many days after, Jesus says, the younger man gathered all things together. He journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But after he had spent it all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and, 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 and this citizen sent him into the field to, to feed the pigs. <laughs> he looked at the food the pigs were eating. He would gladly fill his stomach with the pods that they were eating. But no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, key words. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I'll get up, I'll rise, I'm going to go to my father, and I'm going to say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer even worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Just put me at work. He got up after thinking that and working out his plan. And he came to his father. But while he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost <laughs> and he's found. And they began to be merry. <laughs> this passage really speaks to all of us because how many in this room have never went astray? I won't see a hand. Because all we've gone astray. The scripture tells us very clearly that all of us have sinned. And we've fallen short of the plan that God had for our life. And if we never get right with God, you see, that's why these Christians were asking us yesterday, where's Tommy? Well, Tommy called me, and remember I was praying? I was praying for him on Monday morning here at the church. On the phone, he called his dad and said, Dad, I don't think I'm going to make it. And his dad did the pastoral thing and said, Tommy, is everything clear between you and God? Is there anything between you and the Lord that you need to deal with? No, Dad. Good. It's good. And I'd already had that talk with Tommy. It was on Monday morning, Thursday before. And I knew if there was no more conversation between Thomas Wayne Carell II and Uncle Rod that I could stand at his funeral if that day ever came, not knowing it would be a few days before, up the road, I could stand at his casket and say, this man made things right with God. And because of that, we know with surety that when he took his last breath here in the last heartbeat, when that code happened, and when they stepped back and said, 
He was already with the Father. He was in the arms of the Father who was standing ready. Come on. We're all sinners. See, this part of the service is for us. I don't know when your day is, and I don't know when my day is. I don't know when that appointment is, that appointed time. But I do know this, barring the coming of the Lord, we will all go this way. And I want to ask you what this father asked his son today. Is everything clean between you and God? Is everything clear? Is there anything in your life that you haven't taken care of? Most off, have you come to Jesus as your Savior? That's the most important thing. I was sharing with Bud, back, Bud Leslie back there. It doesn't matter what you accumulate in this world. You can have the most money. You can have wealth. You can have all kinds of stuff. But when it comes down to this day, there's only one thing that matters. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Oh, I'm not talking about those that just say, I talked to someone yesterday, actually. I said, can you tell me about, tell me about the, the faith of your father? So I have another service to do. And can you tell me about the faith of your father? Well, he believed in God. And considering where she's at, I didn't come back with a Christian comeback, a scriptural comeback, but you know what? You can believe there's a God, but even the demons believe that. So just to say I'm, I believe in God is no, no better than what the demons are at that point. But what do you do with God? What do you do with Jesus Christ? That's why our conversations revolved around, is there anything between you and God? Is there sin? Have, are, you, are you living in sin? Are you just a sinner? And you've never come and acknowledged Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The scripture is pretty clear to say that there is a heaven, and everybody that I know of, there's very few that don't believe that, that there's anything beyond this life. There's some. But when we pass, when we take our final breath and heartbeat, this is not the end. It's just the beginning. See, this life that we have here is just a preparation of what's to come. These bodies are hurting, falling apart. We do our best to try to, to take care of them, but I'm telling you, there's just things that come at you. I remember about five years ago when Tom called me up and he says, I took Tommy to the hospital. Took him to the hospital. He said, something's going on. And when they come back, they said, his kidneys have failed. His kidneys aren't working. He's going to have to have dialysis. The peace of God's with Tommy even then. Because at that news... Dad teared up and began to feel for his son. And Tommy says, Oh, Dad, I'm going to be all right. You don't have to cry. But Tommy's body failed. Our bodies are failing. Our, 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 our life is so fragile so fragile there was a day when I thought I was pretty tough you know what I mean some of you guys in here too yeah and that's all past I don't care how you, tall you walk and try to strut it you can't do it like you used to because we're getting older Sin entered into the world. That's what happened. See, God created us eternal beings, and sin entered into this world. And because of sin, we began to decline. Everything declines. I was talking to someone at the 
at the calling last night, and they said, you know what, these weeds this year, have you tried to get out and kill weeds? And I said, not really. <laughs> I haven't had time. But she said, we've tried everything, and we can't kill these weeds. I said, it's the curse. It's just part of the curse. But it's not only the thorns and the thistles and things, it's the sin that came into the world that separated us from a holy God. And Jesus came and died on the cross so that we could be restored in relationship and fellowship back to a heavenly Father. The scripture says there's only one name under heaven by which you may be saved, and that's Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus told Thomas, one of the disciples, if you want to get to heaven, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me, by me. And so that is the challenge we have before us because Tom has already met his reward. There's nothing else to do here except we're going to be going to the cemetery and we're going to plant this in the hope of the resurrection. And that is a certain certainty to come. Because the scripture we shared and I shared with Tom. Jesus says the day will come when the trumpet's going to sound, the voice of the archangel. And the dead in Christ, those who have, as the scripture said, went to sleep in Christ. We're not talking about soul sleep here. We're not talking about soul sleep. We're talking about when he passed this tent, this temporary body that he has, the spirit left and went back to the one who gave it. The same thing will happen to you and I. The difference is, yes, there is a heaven and that's great news, but there's also a hell. There's also a place of separation for those who have rejected Christ and not accepted him as Lord and Savior. Both will be found someday to be a reality. I think right now in our world, God's shaking the fence really hard to see which side you're going to fall on. Are you on God's side? Or are you on the world's side? If you're on the world's side, get on God's side. And you know what? That's pretty blunt, but that's what this guy would say. He was pretty blunt. He was pretty blunt. So, We've shared memories about Tom. We've now looked at ourselves a little bit. I believe the Holy Spirit of God speaking to you. If you're not right with God today, get alone with God. Confess that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Turn your life to him. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your life that you've been going and turn and follow towards Christ. He's the best life there is. Easy? No. But it's the best life. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? I got that answer from this man. Yes, I'm ready to go. I'm ready for Jesus to come. Can you say that same thing today? Yes, I'm ready for Jesus to come. If not, would you make today the day that you choose to allow him to come into your life. You see, it's not you finding the Lord. He's finding you. The son came home and the dad says, hey, my son was lost, but he's found. Where do you stand with the Lord today? That's the consideration that we have before us. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, we quiet our hearts before you and we search our own hearts right now. Lord, we know that life is uncertain. Many times we think we have a lot of time, that we've got 
things to do. We're just maybe, maybe not quite ready. But Lord, help us. Help us to realize the shortness of life. 44 years old here with Tom. A young man in his prime. God, he made that decision. He came back. He came back to saying, yes, Lord, be the God of my life. And he turned his life right back where he was going in the right direction. Lord, we thank you for that. Help us, Lord, to make the same consideration in our lives. If we're not going the right direction, Father, help us by the power of the Holy Spirit to turn to you, to recognize that we have a Savior just waiting. We have a God, the Father, who's just got open arms waiting. No matter what we've done, no matter how bad we've been, no matter all the junk in our life, you're waiting for us to come home. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do in lives here today. Thank you for what you did in Tom's life and in the family here, Lord, to continue to uphold them, undergird them, sustain them during this time of loss. We want to go ahead and thank you and praise you, Father, for Tom's life and the, the 44 years that you gave to us. We give you praise, glory, and honor for what you have accomplished and what you're going to accomplish here. Thank you, Lord, for our friends and family, those who have joined us on the live stream. Father, we pray, pray blessings upon each one. Father, thank you again for Tom's life. We ask and thank you for all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.